Welcome to the Doc is in, our new episode where Diabetes Day Awareness. My name is Muna Taha, Certified Diabetes Educator, and I am here with two distinguished guests. We are talking about diabetes, a condition that affects over half a billion people worldwide. With me, two distinguished guests, Dr. Hussain Hamad, endocrinologist in the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, passionate about patient-centered care and holistic care. Dr. Rabi Hijazi, endocrinologist in the Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, passionate about diabetes technology and innovation. Welcome doctors and thank you both for joining us today. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you both. Assalamu thank you for the invitation. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mullah, for inviting us. You know, World Diabetes Day is such a special day for uh, millions of uh, people who live with diabetes and their families, and it's a great opportunity to share our knowledge today. Thank you. Diabetes is often called a silent epidemic. From your perspective, what makes it a major global health challenge today? Yes, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, the incidence of diabetes is uh, growing worldwide. Um, it could be because of growing or aging population uh, from lifestyle changes as well. Uh, especially the incidence of type 2 diabetes is increasing worldwide. And it is very important, therefore, to recognize this because a lot of patients actually are asymptomatic uh, when they're diagnosed uh, with diabetes. And they may have diabetes for a long time before their actual diagnosis. And they may also develop complications which go undiagnosed because they are delayed in diagnosis of diabetes. So that is why it is so important to screen these patients on a, in a timely fashion. Dr. Hijazi. Absolutely. I agree uh, completely with Dr. Hamad. Um, diabetes is not just about uh, blood sugar. You know, uncontrolled diabetes can lead to serious complication. Unfortunately, it can affect the eyes, uh, can lead to uh, visual impairment, blindness. It can affect the kidneys, leading to kidney failure, uh, dialysis, uh, heart disease, heart attacks, stroke. So it's very uh, important uh, to screen our patient uh, on a timely fashion and uh, to treat diabetes effectively right from the get-go, you know, to prevent these kind of long-term complications. And if it is well controlled, uh, we actually can reduce the, the risk of these complications significantly. Since diabetes is a silent disease, but sometimes there are early warning signs that people ignore, what people should look out for and never ignore? That's a very good question. So there can be a, a lot of symptoms that can go un, un, uh, that can be very important uh, and can uh, alert the patient uh, that, that they may have, uh, that they, may sh they should be screened for diabetes. For example, increased urination, increased thirst, excessive weight gain or weight loss, or just excessive fatigue. These are the patients who should get screened for uh, diabetes in the appropriate setting. Another important symptom is blur blurriness of vision or change in vision, which should alert the patient to get screened for diabetes. Great. Um, I agree uh, completely. These, these are symptoms of uncontrolled diabetes. And if I may add, you know, I can share one experience I had. I had a, a lady who came into my practice. You know, the only symptoms she had is she had recurrent, you know, uh, skin infections. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, we checked her blood sugar and it was qu uh, quite high. So this could be also uh, symptoms of, of di diabetes. Um, and as Dr. Hamad pointed out earlier too, um, most patients are asymptomatic. So it's very important to know your risk factor. So for example, let's say you are a lady who had gestational diabetes or diabetes during pregnancy, you are at a higher risk, or you have family history of diabetes, or you struggle with excess weight, or you are a man, a man is also at a higher risk of having a diabetes compared to a woman. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about how diabetes care has evolved. How has management changed over the past decade, doctor? That's a very interesting question. So there have been a lot of advancements in the last few years in diabetes technology. Uh, the, the two most important that I can think of is a continuous glucose monitor. 
So these are devices that help the patients track the glucose in re real time rather than just having a finger stick glucose check. So the patients can track their glucose and they, it can give them a good idea of how the glucose reacts to different activities or different food intake as well. Another important advancement is um, uh, insulin pump uh, and in insulin delivery systems, which includes insulin pumps and also insulin pens. Uh, they allow the patients to actually uh, dispense insulin in a very precise and safe fashion. Uh, these two are very important technologies. Uh, and then there are some new, newer medications that have come out uh, for diabetes management as well. Dr. Hijazi. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to highlight too about uh, uh, medications. Um, I mean, we came a long way over the past uh, 20 years, and we have now new classes of uh, very effective and very safe uh, medication like uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist, uh, like SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, classes of medication that not only, you know, reduces the blood sugar and normalizes the blood sugar, but actually it has additional benefits like protecting the heart and protecting the kidneys. And some of these medication ac actually can also reduce uh, fat on the liver too. So it's really exciting times, a lot of, lot of, you know, advances, you know, uh, over the past uh, 10 to 20 years. That's incredible progress. Uh, technology is moving so fast. What innovation do you see as the most impactful for patients right now? So that's an interesting question because I think it's the patient empowerment that comes with some of these technologies that is really making changes. For example, the continuous glucose monitor, the patients can track their glucose in real time. They can actually share that data with their caregivers or even family members. And also it helps to make them make decisions and empower them to make these decisions about insulin dose titrations or medication dose titrations as well. So I think the empowerment, empowerment that comes with uh, these devices is a very good step towards um, uh, the, uh, this diabetes technology. Absolutely. I have to agree. And I can give an example from my clinic. You know, I had a patient, you know, uh, just by using a continuous glucose monitor and without making any changes on their medication, just looking at the impact of certain foods on their blood glucose, they were able to make, you know, um, healthy changes. Uh, and uh, it had significant impact on their glucose control and their uh, three months uh, blood sugar average hemoglobin A1C. I also want to point out another important uh, advancement, which is telemedicine. And we uh, saw it during the uh, pandemic. And uh, believe me, it's here to stay. It's here to stay. It really opened the door for a lot of our patients who live far away from the clinic, who have, you know, issue with transportation. It really opened the door for them. And we are now able to uh, deliver effective and specialized diabetes care to them at home, you know when and where they need it. That's great. Let's shift to patient empowerment. Many people with diabetes feel overwhelmed. How, as caregivers, we can better support them? You know, diabetes, chronic disease, they might feel demotivated. That's a very interesting question. So education remains at the heart of the issue. So patient education is extremely important. The more they know about their condition, the better they're able to manage it. So uh, I think uh, when I see a patient in the clinic, I not only prescribe medications, but I just make sure that the patients are involved in the decision making. They should also be involved uh, in problem solving. So we help them to uh, anticipate challenges that may come while they're managing their diabetes. Because in the clinic, they may only see us once every three months, but they're doing this day in and day out at home. So they should be able to manage and troubleshoot what to do in different circumstances. So the more we educate the patients, the more we empower them to manage their glucose readings well. Dr. Hejazi. I, I agree, you know, having diabetes can be very, very challenging and can put an, uh, a big emotional toll on our patient and their, their families. Uh, but I always tell them we're here for them. Uh, they don't have to be alone. We are here to support them. And there are uh, a lot of, you know, um, community programs, uh, peer support groups out there that can also, you know, support them. We do also provide them, you know, with counseling uh, when they are uh, seeing us. And um, 
I always tell them, you know, there is always hope and uh, to always look at the uh, bright things uh, of the matters. What about lifestyle changes? What makes the biggest impact? Yes, one of the bigger impacts is from dietary changes. And uh, like Dr. Rabia was saying, I will back that 100% that even small changes we should celebrate and we should encourage the patients that these are good changes. So for example, we cannot tell them to just avoid sugar completely, but maybe cut down on the sugar intake. Just mm -hmm. increase, for example, healthy proteins, healthy fats, uh, whole grains, uh, incorporation of these in their diet could be very important. And obviously physical activity then comes along, which is very important to encourage physical activity as much as, uh, as, much as possible. But yes, encouraging and celebrating small successes goes a long way. Dr. Hijazi. Great, yeah. Um, let's not forget about physical activity too, you know. Just going for a walk for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, with your loved one, with your spouse, you know, can make a big difference. Um, it improves your insulin sensitivity, so it means the medication you're taking will work better. It will get your sugar also under better control. And it also will relieve uh, some of the stress we face, right. you know, on a day-to-day -day kind of basis. Things also we tend to overlook to our, um, you know, a good sleep. So I always encourage my patient to have a good, you know, uh, six to eight hours uh, sleep uh, every night and um, also to reduce, you know, uh, the, the stress level, you know, as much as we can, you know. As we look ahead, what inspires you most in diabetes research and innovation? There are a lot of things which are coming up, especially in uh, regards to functional cure of diabetes, for example, in type 1 diabetes. We are looking at uh, regeneration of beta cells. We are also looking into research into how to uh, avoid destruction of these uh, insulin producing cells from the immune system. So that really excites me that there's a lot in the pipeline. It's, it's, uh, there's still a long way to go, but at least we have a lot of hope that new things will come along for management of diabetes. Dr. Hijazi. And uh, definitely, definitely, I want to mention here, you know, um, we are in the age of artificial intelligence now and the precision medicine. So um, a lot of things are coming and coming quickly. And um, imagine, imagine, for example, you know, like a model that can predict, you know, glucose strands or can predict, you know, complications of diabetes and can intervene uh, real life, you know, on the spot, you know, to prevent that from occurring. So again, we are really living exciting, you know, times uh, in, time ter in terms of diabetes management. Before we close, could you leave our listeners with one message on where Diabetes Day, what would it be? I think the important thing to remember is to know what your risk factors are and to get screened early. If you're diagnosed with diabetes early, you can actually prevent complications. And if you're diagnosed with diabetes, do not get overwhelmed because there's a whole support system around you that's going to help you go through this whole process. Dr. Hijazi, what's your message for the community? Uh, my message would be um, diabetes is manageable uh, with the right uh, support, with the right mindset, with the right tools, the right medication, you can thrive as a patient. Remember, you are not defined by your uh, disease and there is always hope and we are all here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hamad. Thank you, Dr. Hijazi, for sharing your expertise and your passion. And thank you to our listeners for turning in. On this World Diabetes Day, let's all commit to raising awareness, supporting one another, and working towards a healthier future. Until next time, stay well and healthy.